BYU TV football analyst Blaine Fowler back with us as we get closer to Notre Dame and the team licking their wounds from Oregon State, who, you know what, I just thought was a better football team on Saturday. This is the first time this season that I thought BYU was matched physically, and Oregon State is a team with a lot of team speed. And so, yeah, they lost to a very good football team. They stayed with them for three quarters. But when you turn the football over, it comes back to haunt you. And that was BYU's problem again. And, and in their big games this year, you know, in their losses, they've had this reputation now uh, of turning the football over. They've got to stop that if they hey, you hope to win at Notre Dame. Let's go into the film session. We started to see a little wrinkle the last couple of games with how BYU's finding their way to utilize the speed of Jamal Williams. And he's so good in the open field, and, and they've been implementing this shuffle pass. And what I want you to pay attention to is they get the defensive end to think pass. So he's going to get upfield in his pass rush. And then you can get your center downfield. He's going to go block the linebacker who thinks it's pass and gets in a, in a drop. And then Jamal Williams, he'll just sneak underneath, and they throw this thing inside of that pass rushing defensive end. Now look at the block that center Braden Hansen is throwing right here in the open field on a linebacker. And now you got Jamal Williams in space out in the open field. A very effective play. BYU ran it a couple of times with great success in this ball game. Here's what didn't quite work. The defensive secondary throughout the ball game. Yeah, take a look, they clear out. When you have speed on both sides of the ball, they take Wheaton, they clear him on a fade route, they run a seam down the middle, they bring Brandon Cooks back inside on a deep in route. And to their credit, with just five people, they're able to protect, they keep BYU's pass rush off. Stop right there. The safety, Daniel Sorensen, has to run with that seam route. And this leaves Brandon Cooks wide open. And look at how much space there is between the safeties and where the linebackers are in their pass drops. That's a lot of room to throw the football in. They complete it to Brandon Cooks in that open space. And when you have that kind of team speed at wide receiver, you can stretch that secondary far down the field. And if your linebackers don't get deep enough, there's a nice soft spot in the zone right in there. And Oregon State took advantage of it. They really utilized their speed at wide receiver well. We'll see what Notre Dame does with that uh, on Saturday. Let's get to know the foe as BYU travels 1,500 miles to South Bend, Indiana to take on the University of Notre Dame. Their student enrollment, just under 12,000. Fighting Irish play in Notre Dame Stadium. They wear the blue and gold with gold helmets. All historic stadium capacity, just under 81,000. The Irish are pretty good. They're ranked fifth in the country. Got a perfect season going. And they're coming off a 20 to 13 win over Stanford in overtime. Who are their alumni? Well, there's Joe Theismann, Joe Montana. They've had a few quarterbacks over the years. Uh, Condoleezza Rice. Former U.S. Secretary of State and Steve Bartman, the fan who got in the way of the Cubs' road to the World Series back in 2003. That's not a good when thing. When he reached over there and touched the ball <laughs> and all that stuff. Anyway, we're getting to know the foe and let's get to know them this way, Blaine. They just haven't lost anybody. Well, and the games that where they were heavy favorites, they dominated. You see that game against Navy with a 50 to 10 win. And, and they've had uh, a success against ranked teams this season. Look what they did with Michigan State at Michigan State, a 20 to 3 victory. They beat Michigan. 13 to 6, uh, dominated Miami, who's got a lot of team speed, and then an overtime win at home against Stanford this last week in a ball game that was very, very good. If there's one guy on the Irish defense to watch, who should we be looking for? Well, I mean, he's, this is the guy on the team to watch. He's, he's a Heisman Trophy candidate at linebacker, four year starter, Manti Teo, 42 career starts, consensus preseason first team All American. You look at his tackle numbers, he also has three inter interceptions. He you have to count for him on every play offensively and know where he is going to be. He can change what you do offensively. But for BYU, does their linebacking core regroup and bounce back? Well, this group I call the tackle for loss team. If you take a look at their numbers, these three guys, uh, seven tackles for loss for Hadley, nine for Ziggy Ansah, 11 and a half for Van Noy. These guys need to be disruptive. And what BYU needs to get out of this trio and the rest of that defense they need to force some turnovers. That is going to be a must for them to have an opportunity in this ball game. You looking for a low scoring game on Saturday? I, I think so. If BYU takes care of the ball, low scoring. You see what BYU has down the stretch. After Notre Dame, Georgia Tech, it's Idaho, San Jose State, and New Mexico State. Got to get to six wins to get to the Poinsettia Bowl. It looks like they'll get there. You just want them to limp in. Yeah, they, I think they're, they're going to be bowl eligible, but boy, wouldn't it be nice to get a win against a top five team on the road to ah. kind of change the momentum of the season. And steal the headlines of college football for, for at least one week. We'll Absolutely. see what happens. Thanks, Blaine.